<clears throat> okay. Okay, listen. Oof. So the reason I asked no, you to stop by today, mad. I need you to watch this video. Am I in trouble? It's complicated. How, how complicated? Everything's under control, but I want you to watch this, and then we'll talk about it. I have one issue that I need to address like the numbers on the house, and that issue is MP. Let's talk about MP. I'm hearing his coach isn't a fan, thinks he's more into fame than actually hooping. And I got to say, I agree wholeheartedly. You, hear, you ever hear of an NBA player with a YouTube channel? Michael Jordan didn't have no YouTube channel. LeBron James don't have no YouTube channel. Let's get serious here, people. I'd be shocked if MP starts a game this year. This coach isn't starstruck. He's going to make MP earn every single minute, as it should be. Nigga! Karis Levert. DJ Warren. Miles Turner. Malcolm Brogdon. Demonis Sabonis. season in stock and tonight it'll be the Charlotte Hornets going up against the Indiana Pacers this is Kevin Harlan we've got Chris Webber and Greg Anthony with us and from the sideline we'll be hearing from David Aldridge DA take it away thank you Kevin well Gordon Hayward signed with Charlotte last season he said we're anything but older and veteran but we keep finding ways to win in clutch situations that's something to build on each day, each game, we're getting better. You do that, and the results will take care of themselves. Guys, back to you. Well, they are fun to watch, certainly, David. Thanks. Let's check out Indiana's starting lineup. In the post, it's Sabonis and Turner. Lavert on the wing. He's paired with Warren. And it's Brogdon in at the point. And for Charlotte. Up of the forward spots, it's Hayward and Bridges. 
The guard spots are filled by Ball and Rogier. And it's Washington in at the five down low. And Greg, with over a decade you had in the NBA, is there an opening night that you remember most? Man, that very first time putting on that Knicks jersey. The game was in Orlando. I played 28 minutes, which was a lot for a rookie back then. And I'll never forget that night. And it's going to be the Pacers off the tip. Guys, what do you think about the offensive approach? So far that we've seen for Indiana. The three-pointer has been a major weapon for them in early stages. I mean, they'd be smart to keep moving and working on the perimeter. Yeah, they're showing some muscle also in the first half as well and, and getting a lot of their points in the paint. Really like the balance they've shown. On the free throw, no good. And, and it's exciting watching Bridges continue to grow. This guy has a hunger to keep getting better. Here's McConnell. Their offense, Stone Cold. Another miss there. Hornets trail by four. On the wing, Bridges, covered by Lamb. Here's the kid, Oubre, outside. Shot clock at six. Laid in with a nice touch off the glass. Crafty and cashing it in from there. Oubre Jr. enjoys working on his interior game when given the opportunity. Here's McConnell. Here's Sabonis. And slam dunk by Sabonis. Oh, the movement Corey off the Gray. ball is good. I mean, and the pass to hit him in stride is even better. Here's the kid. He's covered by McConnell. Here's Plumlee. It's rebounded by Indiana. That's a surprise. I mean, really out of character for him to miss when the defense is not right up on him. Here's Stevenson, and the ball goes out of bounds. Nice touch by Plumlee. McDaniels checked in for Charlotte. Pick him right, pick him right. McConnell with it, and it's Martin picking him up. To the inside, here's Sabonis. And no good trying to use the glass. Credit to D for not giving up on that play. He's a tough cover down low. And a lot can be said about DeMontis Sabonis' scoring ability. But everything else he does, he also excels at. Also a terrific passer for a big man. Textbook, nice pass, great catch, even better finish. Stevenson against Mark. Sabonis trying to get open. Stevenson can't hit. Charlotte has gone a meager 1-6 and six in three-point line since we got started tonight. You know, when you think about the other areas where Sabonis stands out, rebounding has to come to mind as well. Yeah, and Kevin, he, he's a guy who fights for possessions. Not going to overwhelm you athletically, but he knows his team relies on him to be a force on the glass, so he's never afraid to get physical to win those battles. And so it's Charlotte with it. Following the miss by Lamb Stevenson. Lamb passes to McConnell. Stripped away. Here's the kid. Covered by Lamb. The kid passes to Plumley. Here's the kid. No points in the game yet for him. And it's Martin missing. He's not an easy man to stop when he's attacking the basket. The D doing everything it can. Martin against Lamb. Shot 
Shot clock at five. Here's Sabonis. And it's good with time running down on the shot clock. Sabonis has got seven. Getting inside. Sabonis finishes strong. You can see how comfortable he is shooting at that range. The kid passes to Oubre. Outside, Martin. Oubre outside. Pass to the kid. Back to Oubre. Over Sabonis. Oubre can't get it to go. The defense has done a good job of forcing him into tough shots this morning. Here's Lamb. That shot is off. Great D that time from Oubre. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time taking the lid off. Plumley, no luck. We'll see if they want to trade two for one here. Got to time up that clock to do so. Kicks it out to Stevenson. And that's out of bounds. Indiana will retain possession. And the Hornets making a change here. Richards is checked in. How about that strong defensive performance for this half's mobile one block? And in a close game, Blocks like that are so clutch, and that could be a real difference maker here tonight. Here's a bonus. He's got seven. Oubre with the steal. About seven seconds separating the shot and game clocks. Just great anticipation and awareness to come up with the steal and then trigger the fast break. 26 seconds left in the first quarter. Now, here's McConnell. He's guarded closely. Off the mark with the little step back, Johnny. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Pacers will take it. Bray against Stevenson. And it's Lamb atop the key over Martin. And that shot was up in time, but doesn't go in. And still a close game as the first quarter comes to a close. Pacers lead by two. Let's take a quick break now, and then it's on to the second quarter after this. some great players at the small forward position but T.J. Warren can score with the best of them and he said he's always excited to face those elite talents I'm looking forward to it uh, like I say all the time it's a blessing to be able to challenge and play against the best players night in and night out so I'm always excited for uh, a matchup well we know Greg had a breakthrough for his sixth season but Warren missed almost all of year seven to injury yeah, and, and he's confident he can come back strong. Remember, this is a guy who scored 53 points in a game, so his talent level, obvious. Some good action already in this one, but a fairly even matchup after the first quarter of play. And let's quickly break down the game, guys, we have seen from Indiana. What do you think? Well, you can see these guys are unafraid to take chances defensively. Yeah, it's a gambling style that pays off, keeping things in disarray for that offense. They've got Martin Oubre out there with McDaniels. Then it's the kid, and it's Richards in at the center position. So that's who Charlotte starts the second one. He'll be happy there in front. He knows better than anyone else that he's still without a bucket. He won't be happy. And really, it's been a major aspect of their offense in the early stages here. Their success working the ball inside and getting points from close range. Now, here's McConnell. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. And the kid picks up the foul. That is his first foul of the game. I mean, that's a tough break for the D. I mean, he took the hit and drew the whistle. And Indiana making a change here. Turner's checked in. Just over one minute has passed here in the second quarter. Here's Lamb. Headshot off. And the Hornets now going the other way. The next game is in Cleveland taking on the Cavaliers. 
and that'll be the first of a two-game road trip for him. On the sideline, let's catch up with Hall of Famer David Aldridge. Good evening, Kevin. Malcolm Brogdon has become a Pacers stalwart. He said, I fit the identity of this team as an underdog that overperforms and proves people wrong. I've been asked to be the leader of this team. I lead with my voice and by example. I'll be fearless on the court so that my teammates can follow. Kevin? I love what he's about, David. Thank you. And they keep hammering away at him inside, forcing the ball into the paint. And he's got his first chance at the line here. Rozier, he's checked in for Martin. Warren's checked in for Indiana. Harris Levert comes in for Jeremy Lamb. McConnell no good on the free throw. And Chris, one change we're seeing now. A lot less post-up scoring. Uh, do you miss it? I, I do miss it. I mean, if you're seven foot, you should be close to the basket at times if you have game. You got to win. But I love to see how players uh, do it effectively inside and outside. Think about it, Dean. Think about your position. And on the whole, I love the way that the game is evolved. And, and, and I really miss the post-up because you have to have complete game. And I think we're rewarding skill and complete game now. So I think it's going to die. 18 feet out, and it's sent back by Turner. Lock at six. Ogier, the pass to the kid. A second chance effort, and it goes out of bounds. That one off Turner. An elite rim protector and shot blocker. Turner excels at rising up and denying those shots. And some changes here for the Hornets. P.J. Washington, he's checked in for McDaniels. Gordon Hayward comes in for Oubre. And Ball subbed in for the kid. And Indiana with a change here, too. Ogden's checked in. And a little under two and a half minutes gone by here in this. Here's... group on the floor now for Charlotte. So an entirely new group in now for Indiana. Sabonis, he's checked in for Turner. Lamb comes in for Torrey Craig. And Stevenson's checked in for Karis LeVert. And it's TJ McConnell in for Malcolm Brogdon. Oubre passes to the kid. Just five to shoot. Fires the three. It's hauled in by Warren. This shot's just, it's not there right now with this team leading. Perhaps, you know, let's focus on some other areas of the game. Some nice passing here by Indiana. Kicks it out to Stevenson. There's a bonus. And he can't stop the run as he misses. Charlotte leading by four. Martin finds Bridges. Doesn't go that time. Outside, Lamb. No good on the triple. Charlotte's gone three of five beyond the arc since the start of the second quarter. Oubre and finished off by Oubre. And the leaping ability of Oubre Jr. When he gets inside, this guy is determined to finish. Pacers trail by six. And what I like about Miles Bridges, such a versatile player, scores it, rebounds and passes, and also gets after it defensively. I love this. He's clear. His work ethic is strong. I mean, he just wants to keep improving over time. And I'd say that he's well on his way. Here's the kid following the score by Indiana. The feed to Martin. Got a piece of it. Stolen by Stevenson. Here's the three. A three-pointer is right on target. And now just a one-point Charlotte lead. Oh, heads up play by Warren. Spotting and wide open shooter and delivering a dime. And the best of the kid. Oubre against Lamb. From 12 feet out. And that one hits back iron. 
And for the Pacers, they're shooting 35% so far in the second. They need to move the ball around more and find better looks. And the rebound goes to Martin. Charlotte shooting 45% in quarter number two. Oubre, good. And he does it to the around. If the buck is there for him, he's going to get it. Outside, Lamb. Up top, Warren. He's guarded by Plumley. And the shot by Warren, no good. And they haven't been able to turn it into a big lead, but their rebounding advantage is starting to add up. Here's the kid. No good on the shot, a bit long that time. And so it's McConnell with it. He'll bring it up for the Pacers. They trail by three, and this matchup with the Hornets, it's their first game of the NBA's regular season. And they were able to take the season series in that matchup last year, but overall, two teams that were very similar in the standings. Now, here's Stevenson. After Jeremy Lambsmas, Lumley with some nice D. And D making that layup look very uncomfortable for him. Good aggressive work down low. Hard work on the boards. A lot of competition for that one. But he's got the limp to be the first one, too. So it's Gordon Hayward making things happen for the Charlotte Hornets. He's been a major threat from three-point range. Got two of them to fall in that quarter. Back right after this. If you're just joining us, we've played through the first half in a game that's been fairly even so far. Real in now for Indiana. Tory Craig. He's checked in for Miles Turner. Jeremy Lamb comes in for War. Lance Stevenson's checked in for Karis LeVert. And it's TJ McConnell in for Malcolm Brogdon. On the court for Indiana. TJ McConnell is out there with Lance Stevenson. Then it's Tory Craig. Then it's Sabonis. And it's Lamb. at small forward. Here's Stevenson. That one no good. Great D that time for Martin. Richards passes to the kid. Here's the dish to Oubre. Here's the kid. Here's the lob to the hoop. Oh, a nice defensive play to disrupt the alley hoop. Down low, here's Craig. And the powerful oh, one-handed slam. But, but really, Lamb, he's a jack-of-all-trades kind of player. A superb passer with good instincts. Here's the kid. Pass to Oubre. It's up a three. And out of bounds as the Pacers gain possession. Let's take another look at the staunch defense during that mobile one block. And that has got to help the morale of this team. Let's see if that sets up a run here. Pacers trail by six. Passes it to Sabonis. Good. And McConnell gets the assist. Sabonis has got nine. And the confidence from Sabonis. Since being traded from OKC back in 2017, this guy has raised his level. The kid passes to Richards. To the middle. Here's the kid. Charlotte moving it around. Down to five on the shot clock. 
inside. There's McDaniels. And DeMontis Sabonis pulls it down. Sabonis has got 13 rebounds in the game. Class eating. Over to the wing. Outside, Lamb. A floater, and that one good. Lamb's got his first points of the night. Yeah, that was the third straight high percentage look the defense has allowed. The, the defenders have got to start putting bodies on bodies. The kid passes to Richards. Misses the layup. Indiana's going to less than productive two of six from three-point land in the second half. That evens the score. And now you see them starting to really work the ball inside. It's tipped and stolen by McConnell. For the lead, it's rebounded by Charlotte. Here's the kid to the paint. Trying to end the drought. The shot comes out. His bad night from the field is only going to get worse if he keeps throwing up shots like that. Here's Craig, and it's blocked. And so it looks like the Pacers will retain possession here. Plumlee is checked in for the Hornets. Plumley against Sabonis. Pass to Craig. Six on the shot clock. In the corner, it's Stevenson. That doesn't go in. Had a chance, though, to take the lead. Here's the kid. He's covered by McConnell. Back to Plumley, And it's McConnell with the rebound. And uh, Indiana shooting about 33%. Not happy with their play on that end. Stevenson can't hit. Well, the Hornets shooting has been a little ragged. Just 38% from the field. The pass to the kid. Here's Richard. He's covered by McConnell. Pass to the kid. The Hornets need to get a shot off here. To end the drought. Craig pulls it in. Craig's got his fifth rebound in this one. For the lead, two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. First trip to the free throw line for him in this one. Shooting two. No good on that one. Trumps, so they now lead by one. A little bit shaky at the line there. I mean, he did the important part and got him in front. Here's the kid, defended by Sabonis. Takes it inside, and the shot goes in from the kid. The kid's got his third basket of the night right there. And Greg MP, the highly touted rookie, he was a classic one and done in college. And that wasn't a surprise to anyone close to MP. He feels his game is NBA ready and wanted to compete against the best as soon as possible. Charlotte shooting 35% or so in the third quarter. Whatever they're trying is not working. Some solid defense there from Lamb. And so it's Lamb with it. He brings it up for the Pacers. It's a one-point game. At the conclusion of this game, they're off to Washington. And they'll face the Wizards. That will conclude their brief two-game road trip. 112 left in the third. Here's the kid. Dives to the hoop. Makes it off the glass. 
The kids got eight. Third quarter here and five lead changes so far. And guys, neither team has been able to pull away. Bounce pass from McConnell. Here's a bonus. It's rebounded by Charlotte. Richards got his fourth rebound in this one. Oubre passes to the kid. Great pass to set up the lay-in. Now it's a three-point Hornets lead. They're scoring boatloads of buckets. It's raining buckets from inside. Pass to Sabonis. Over Plumley. Sabonis can't get that one to go. There's 31 seconds left in the third. Martin, the pass to the kid. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. And you know what? You allow a guy to get right to the rim like that. That's your only option. The Hornets have gone 9 of 13 from the line. And if we want to take a look back, they converted about 76% from the line. The first free throw is good. Charlotte making a switch here. Bridges checks in. Indiana also making some changes. Turner comes in for Sabonis. And Warren subbed in for Torrey Craig. Both free throws good from the kid. Yeah, and their free throw shooting has really improved here in the second half. Warren against Bridges. Now Warren. He's got eight. On deep. And they get it back. That's made a huge difference in this game, if you ask me. Their offensive rebounding has been sensational. And not so fast. The officials are going to check that shot again and make sure they got it right before we go to the fourth. And even though, you know, you're thinking maybe we don't need the replay in a situation like this, still plenty of time left in this game. And really, it's about getting the call right. They're going to switch the call. There is no doubt, and looking at the replay, that he got it off in time. Well, it's good they decided to take another look at it. I know some folks don't like how replay slows the game down and interrupts the flow, but when you have it there, they've got to use it. LaMelo Ball getting it done for the Hornets. He notched eight points in the quarter and has that terrific basketball instinct on display. We come back right after this. And a moment now as we take a look at our State Farm assists of the game. And, and I'm glad this was the pick because I love this pass. Such a great dish. That's what I call court vision. Well, it's also called making a good read, understanding where everyone is and taking full advantage. Fantastic. And I know I speak for all of us when I say I can't wait to see what kind of finish a...
it's the Hornets picking up the win. Some good moments throughout this one, but they have the clear advantage down the stretch. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the way they executed on both ends of the floor, completely under control for the vast majority of the game. And whenever there was a misstep, they just didn't allow it to fester. And that's why they're going to walk away with the win. And that'll do it for the first game of the NBA season. For Chris Webber, Craig Anthony, and David Olsen, this is Kevin Harlan. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you next time. Have a great evening. Hi there, Frank Valentine here. Hey, it looked like you were out of your depth tonight. Now, does this validate the concerns about you on draft night? How you doing, Frank? Um, are you serious with that question? I mean, it was one game. Everybody has an off night, and that just goes to show that even before I got here, a lot of folks made up their mind about me just because I had a YouTube channel. But you know what? That's fine. <laughs> You're going to get plenty of opportunities to see me play, and they won't like that at all. So, but what if they do? They won't. Yeah, but so how do you know? How do you make sure? I'm going to play better than I did next game, Frank. You'll see. <laughs> well, I sure hope so, at least for your sake. Okay. Okay. Listen. Ooh. So the reason I asked Yo, you to stop by today, mad. I need you to watch this video. Am I in trouble? It's complicated. How, how complicated? Everything's under control, but I want you to watch this, and then we'll talk about it. I have one issue that I need to address, like the numbers on the house, and that issue is MP. Let's talk about MP. I'm hearing his coach isn't a fan thinks he's more into fame than actually hooping. And I got to say, I agree wholeheartedly. You, hear, you ever hear of an NBA player with a YouTube channel? Michael Jordan didn't have no YouTube channel. LeBron James don't have no YouTube channel. Let's get serious here, people. I'd be shocked if MP starts a game this year. This coach isn't starstruck. He's going to make MP earn every single minute, as it should be. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. All eyes are on MP now. Is he going to fold under the pressure? If I'm Harvey Lesser, the GM who overruled his coach, I'm up at night sweating all over this. Good luck, Mr. Lesser. You and MP are going to need it. This airs tonight. I've got a friend at Top Takes Daily sent it over as a favor. <laughs> so you telling me Coach don't want me here? You weren't his first choice, but that's not necessarily a big deal. Oh, and you're sure about that? Yeah, front offices have varying opinions on prospects all the time. What's important is how you react okay, to so it. Okay, so how do you want me to react, Kristen? Well, that all depends on what you want and what you're willing to do to get it. What do you mean? So you can either wait and see or speed the process up. Um, but everything has drawbacks and benefits. It's not a simple calculation. Okay, so what if we try to speed all of this up? What does that look like? Go over coach's head and speak to the GM directly. But doesn't Harvey know everything that's going on behind the scenes? Uh, he lets his coaches coach. That sounds like a dead end to me. No, no, but it does come with risks. Sure, coach isn't going to like it, but he reports to the GM. So if you can present a solid argument to bump your minutes, it might be able to move the needle. Okay, so what about my brand positioning? What's the hit for a guy who complains about PT this early? Yeah, short term, it'll shape the conversation around you. No question. Some people love a player who speaks up for what he knows is right, and others want you to stay in your lane, listen to coach, not question the organization. 
there's no right answer. It's up to you how you want to be perceived. So how do you want to play it? You don't have a preference? I'm here to provide you the menu, the pros and cons. In the end, it's up to you because you have to own it and live with the consequences. <laughs> okay, word. But I need to have an answer before you leave this room because if we're going to shape the narrative, we need to get out ahead of this now. Dead honest? Just don't sit right with me not getting my shot because of some office politics. All right, then we'll set up the meeting with Harvey. You tell your side of the story and we take it from there. Okay, now you be honest. Do you think that's the right move? It's one of several right moves. You'll know when you're good if it's the right move for you. This is the move. I'll set up a meeting. Okay, for real, thank you so much for helping me work through this. I really appreciate it, Kristen. Hey, man, that's what I'm here for. If you need anything else, you know where to find me. I'll see you soon. All right. Take care, Kristen. Yeah, I'll see you soon.